Fine. Anthony Hartwig here with a YSN Western Reserve volleyball player profile. I'm joined by Danielle Volvatich. Danny, welcome back. It's good to, good to be back interviewing you again. Thank you so much. It's an honor. Thank you. And uh, senior year, it's, it's come and gone. It's, 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 it's wild that you're a senior already. What's it kind of been like, all, uh, you know, you're, you're almost done with volleyball. You know, you got, you got a couple more games and then tournaments. What's the senior experience kind of been like? Well, it's been a great experience. We have a great group of girls this year that just really come together. and Our bonding is just so great. I'm having a super fun senior year along with the other seniors. And this year sticks out from the others because it's special. It's my senior year. And I think we will go really deep in the tournaments this year, which makes it another thing that's really special. And it's just, I can't believe I'm a senior too. It's literally time just flies by. It's crazy. You got a good mix of seniors and young players on that team. What's it kind of been like stepping into a leadership role? I know you've always been kind of a leader on the teams that you're on, but now you're uh, a upperclassman leader, a senior leader, it's, it's, it's expected of you. What's that kind of been like? It's been a good experience. I've had practice always being a leader and everything, but now that I'm a senior, I feel like the girls look up to me now as a role model, not only as a leader on and off the court, as in like in the classroom. And basically just being a person they hopefully want to be in the future, with good grades and working hard and everything. So I'm glad I could fill that role of leadership on and off the court. I like that you kind of used the term role model in the, in the way that the younger players look up to you. In times when, you know, it's tough, you know, there's tough practice. Maybe it's a practice you're not feeling too well or you're just mm -hmm. having a bad day or something like that. Does the fact that you know that there is the next generation or the, the sophomores and freshmen who are, Looking to you and the other seniors as an example, does that help you push through that time? Definitely. I always keep a, I, if you ask anyone, I always have a smile on my face, no matter what. If I'm having a bad day, a good day. If I am having a bad day, I have my teammates around me to pick me up. And I just keep going because you will have bad days. Everyone has bad days. No one's perfect. And you just have to learn and usually the younger kids will learn to push through that because the sun will rise the next day. Oops. If you have a bad day, then that day's going to be over. You just have to pick yourself right back up and keep on doing it until you get it right or if you have a good day. YSN has been covering you since you were a freshman. You guys are the first class, this whole senior class out throughout the area. First class mm -hmm. to seen as a freshman to senior. So from your perspective, what's your development been like from freshman year to senior year as you look at yourself as a volleyball player? What kind of things have changed? What kind of things do you think you've improved on? And, and, and how have you grown throughout your high school experience? Well, my freshman year, I obviously everyone knows I was at South Range and then I made to move to made the move to Western Reserve. So that obviously changed. But through my high school career, I learn to keep my composure and not get like in my head if I make a mistake. I always, I've learned to just like shake things off and everything. And then I've also learned to teach and to give good, const not like constructive criticism, but just tell someone, hey, like make sure you do this or hey, you're not doing this correctly. so. Here's an adjustment you can make just to be like basically a leader almost. And it's taught me so much watching all the other upperclassmen I've played with too and how they were role models to me and basically just wanted to carry on the legacy of being a great role model. And you brought up the people that have taught you how to lead in the past. Everyone who's a good leader learns from somebody. So who were some of the upperclassmen in your career that kind of strung you along and you kind of tried to reflect the way they led you and when you lead the, the younger people on your team? 
One person that definitely sticks out is Laura Sigworth. Laura graduated last year and she was our setter. And like me, she's always had a smile on her face. And she was that person that just kept everyone upbeat and just calmed everyone down at the same time. And she knew that we had her back when she had bad days too. So I basically learned some, some things from her about what it's like to be a leader and how to handle that. So thank you, Laura, if you ever see this interview. <laughs> um, no, you, I like that you brought up your setter from last year because losing a setter and then having to get a new one your senior year, it could be kind of hard, but you have a heck of a setter this year. What's that, mm -hmm. what's that uh, relationship like and, and how has it kind of morphed? Because I'm sure in the summer you guys had to work on getting in sync and, and everything like that. So what's the relationship like with the setter now? And, and how has it grown since even the first game to now? Well, Gianna is the one that, Gianna Pear, she's the one that sets me. And last year as a freshman, she was brought up to varsity, I think like at the beginning of the season, maybe a couple games in. And she was setting at the varsity level. Well, she was, she was playing at the varsity level last year. And we all knew she set, and we ran some reps with her last year for setting. And now this year, like me and Gianna, we have that connection. We, she's literally one of my best friends, and I love her dearly. She's so funny, and we just have that hitter setter connection. We, I swear, we think alike sometimes on like what plays we want to run, and we just have that connection that a hitter and a setter should have. You've had a season where you guys have been and played a lot of tough game to out of conference won some lost some but when you're when you're scheduling those kind of teams that kind of up in a division up out of conference and you said you expect a, a tournament run what's that kind of do for you when you go play a team that is doing what with it like Chris you know, a couple of division 12 and 2 a team like that that can do some things that you might not even see in your district tournament mm -hmm. playing those tougher teams that are a division above us or even two divisions above us help us greatly because we see how great they play and playing better teams makes us better and playing better teams exposes what we need to work on so by losing to those teams makes us better than probably even winning those games because we could go back and film and pick up on what did we do wrong what could we do better how could we improve this and Gerard, we lost in five sets, but it was a very tough battle. And same with Crestview too. We we battled with them, and we put and both teams put up a really good fight. Um, Mineral Ridge is also another great team that is in our conference, so we'll play them twice, and then we'll probably see them in the postseason play too. But basically, just playing those tougher teams makes us better as a team, and just makes yeah just makes us better and just makes us improve on what we need to improve on what is the uh the personality around western reserve volleyball kind of like we always see them on the court but you know you get to spend so much time with them off the court what, what's the personality around the team kind of like oh my gosh i can't even explain what the personality is like we are so close as a team we can literally joke around with each other and no one gets mad at each other no one points fingers. It's so nice that everyone just gets along. We always laugh. We have a lot of team bonding, and it's just great. We, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just like through the roof. Like everyone loves each other. We're just a huge family that gets along, and we basically will never get sick of each other, and it's great to have a team like that. You had to have senior night a little early this year because no one really knew what was going on. What was that? experience like where you had to kind of feel the emotions of senior night but it was a little bit different because you still had games to play on that court mm -hmm. it was different because usually senior night is on the very last home game of the season and basically it wasn't the last home game because since coronavirus we didn't know like once we got back to school if it was if our volleyball season was going to be over and i'm very thankful that our volleyball season is still going on but I was, I was super sad for me and the other seniors. We loved playing with each other the past couple of years. And it's going to be sad when we go our separate ways. So even though it was 
It wasn't our last home game. It was still a very special senior night with everyone there and our team. And there were some tears shed, I will admit. I did cry, but I just, at least we, we got a win too. So that was a good thing on senior night. But yeah, I was going to say, you went and you, you took care of business. You got that win. What was that like? You had to feel those emotions, but then kind of put them away for a little bit and, and go focus and play a volleyball game. I've asked other seniors this, and, and I'm going to ask you, what was that kind of like? You know, you, you, you had to let yourself feel what you had to feel, but you also had to focus and, and put your mind right for a volleyball game. Well, we always said on different senior nights, like past senior nights, all right, emotions are over. It's time to put our game faces on. It's time to go out there and perform. And that's basically what it was this year. We shed a few tears. Emotions were high, but we knew emotions were going to be high. So we, and everyone knew that we had to go out and take care of business. Even though it was senior night, it was still another game where we had to go perform to our best capability. And we did that, and I'm proud that we did that, even though everything was about the seniors. But it was, it was nice that we just knew that we needed to put our game faces on and to go perform. There's another big name on your team that I kind of want to, just because of the name, the name kind of brings respect because it's the Hughes. Mm -hmm. And everyone knows the Hughes family and, and what they're good at. What's it been like watching her kind of live up to that name and, and watching her work so hard and, and, and kind of when I watch her play, it just, it's almost identical to her sisters and the way that she hits and the way that she approaches. What's it kind of been like being on the team with her? It's a great experience, her and Lisa Eicher. Olivia is a great hitter, and obviously she has two older sisters that put, both play college volleyball at YSU, so she's obviously learned from them. But Olivia is definitely going to make a name for herself at Western Reserve through her next three years of high school and, and that, towards the end of this volleyball season. She's been a great asset to the team, a great hitter, and a great – defensive player and server as well she's just she's great she's a great teammate and she's one of my other best friends on the team too and I'm dear and I'm so glad I got to play with her this year because she's just that person that you always want to be around what makes you kind of proud that you get to wear the blue and red and you're a part of Western Reserve and when you graduate from Western Reserve and you look back on all the memories not just with your sports but with just your high school experience, what makes you proud that you kind of get to represent that school? Everything. Just the teachers are amazing. They're so nice. If you need help, the teachers are there. The guidance counselor, the principals, and even your coaches. Your coaches, you could go to for anything. So I'm very happy to graduate in blue and red this upcoming year. And then continue wearing well, navy blue and red as I go to Robert Morris University to play basketball. You know, we, we got to talk about that. I want to save a large part of this conversation for basketball season when we catch up with you again. But uh -huh. obviously last year you committed to Robert Morris before your season. Mm -hmm. So now that you've already committed and you already know where you're going, does that kind of take a weight off your shoulders for your senior season that you're not worried about – getting exposure you're not worrying about reaching out to coaches you can just go out and focus completely on high school season and what you have to do to make your team better I will be honest the recruiting process was definitely stressful for me because there were so many great schools that recruited me and I was so thankful that like all the schools that recruited me did recruit me and I'm glad that I picked Robert Morris and once I committed to Robert Morris Yes, the stress did go away, and I'm so very happy with my decision. I would pick Robert Morris 10 out of 10 times, and it does feel like a weight lifted off my shoulders, but I still have to perform. I still have to do my best, even though I'm committed, because I have to work my hardest to still perform, and leading into college, it's going to be a whole other level, too. We're going we're gonna to table that, and it's going to be a nice tease for all the fans that want to watch your, your basketball interview later during basketball season. We'll talk more about Robert Morris then. Uh, but back to volleyball, um, what kind of things with this volleyball team, what's your favorite kind of team bonding experience with the volleyball program that you've had? 
Um, definitely our lock-ins, our lock-ins at school. Unfortunately, because of the pandemic, we couldn't do our lock-in this year, but our lock-ins in the past have been super fun. It's been a great team bonding experience. And this year, every Sunday we do team dinners this year, last year, the year before. And that's a great team bonding experience as well in place of the lock-ins that we had in past years. Do you have any uh, kind of pregame routines that you like to kind of stick to? Are you kind of superstitious at all? Um, yes, I do have superstitions. And I do have pregame routines. And it actually involves basketball. So on game, so on volleyball game days, I go and shoot in the gym, just off the gun, just light stuff so I don't wear myself out, my legs and everything. And then I always have to have some kind of braid in my hair. If it's just two braids or the hairstyle I've been wearing is like two Dutch braids going back into a ponytail, I've been wearing that a lot. Um, so that's basically it. And then I always come home and usually I eat something small, maybe a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Those are my favorite sandwiches. So I usually eat one of those as a little snack because I don't like eating a lot before my games just in case like I get sick or something. So, yeah. So you don't, even, you don't like eating a lot before the games, but what about after a hard fought game? What's your favorite post game meal? <laughs> um, either a grilled cheese sandwich or just cereal. <laughs> what uh What's what's the what's the go-to cereal after a game then? What's what's your go-to cereal in the mass in the cereal cabinet? Oh, that's a hard one. Right now it is Cookie Crisp, but it just depends on what we have. We have Honey Nut Cheerios in there, which I love Honey Nut Cheerios. I I can literally eat almost any kind of cereal and it'd be my favorite. But right now it's probably Cookie Crisp. Definitely. You sound kind of like me, where you get like these cereal moods for like six months at a time, where you're like. I'm all in on, on Captain Crunch and then uh, uh -huh. had enough of that. Let's try something else. <laughs> exactly, yes. Um when uh when let's talk about your coaching staff when you kinda you know you're working with them, what are they like? What's it been like being under them and uh what how have they helped you kind of grow as a not just a volleyball player but but as a person? They are amazing. Every day after a game or just at the beginning of practice they always explain to us what we need to do to get better and coach lorenzi actually she she like looks these quotes up on the internet and tells us these quotes to like keep us motivated and she's super funny she's she's a great coach and same with coach barber she is a great coach too. They stay after practice for whoever wants to stay after practice just to work on anything and they just devote their free time and basically their whole time other than teaching into volleyball. They watch film, they make notes on the film, they cut clips for us to watch what we're doing wrong. It's just a great coaching staff to have and with a great coaching staff you can go a long way and is we've been very successful in the past couple of seasons, and a big part of that is because of them. And with uh, all these player profiles, Danny, we like to give the player the chance to kind of thank their support system, their support staff, uh, everyone that's kind of been there for, through them for, for the whole uh, for their whole athletic career. So with that, time is yours to kind of thank whoever you want to thank for for supporting you over the years. Okay. Well, first and foremost, I would love to thank my parents. Thank you to my mom and dad for everything they've ever done for me, for driving me to and from practices, for always supporting me coming to my games, home or away, and a very special thanks to my dad for getting off of work for as much games as he can. And a big thank you to my grandma and grandpa. Unfortunately, they cannot make some of the games this year due to the pandemic, but I know they are supporting me from home and I thank them for my support every single day and for all the years I've been playing. And then lastly, my brothers, my, well, not lastly, my aunt and uncle are next, but my brothers 
I'm, my brothers l like watching me play sports and they like coming to my games and having my little siblings there watching me play just makes me so happy to see them there and supporting me. And then I want, I also want to thank my aunt and uncle for always paying attention on the news and on in, in the newspapers for articles of me and my aunt actually a huge thank you goes out to her because every single sport I've played for the past four years she's made a huge scrapbook of pictures and articles about me so she's devoted so much time and money into that and I just thank her so much for doing that for me. Danny that's all great and uh, we hope that Maybe your grandparents can't come to every game, but maybe they can catch some on YSN now that mm -hmm. we are proud to have Western Reserve and the whole NVAC as a part of the, the YSN family. I hope they can catch some of your volleyball and basketball games. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. It was great to hear from you, and it's great to hear from you again. It feels like a good throwback because, you know, like I said, your senior class is the first that we've had go through from freshman year to senior year. So. It's good to touch base with you again. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I love touching base with you again.